much more about having tried to go in, start a fight. Last pick. Hard to see him mention. He's kind of saying no. What that group pull for him is. You're assuming the lane's going to be a Necro Five and a Tiny remaining. as well. And you have yeah, a Silencer yeah. next to you. So probably a pretty strong laner required here. Hmm. It, it does, before. yeah, someone with mobility and someone who can also be in the fray to, like, create yeah. space between the Arc Warden. Turn to ban. I, I think that makes a lot of sense, though, that ban on the timber. Like, that kind of fits that whole idea. Like, you have to be up and close, because you're just trying to create, like, a blockade for your arc. But you also need to be able to fight with these Brewmaster ulties and keep up with all the Brewlings. Are there more heroes that could do that? Fixing your draft with the one roll is always very Ten difficult, I find. Remaining. The only hero that ever does it is, like, Faceless Void. It doesn't feel like their the drafts in it terrible. Like, Five seconds remaining. Need this hero to fill gaps. I don't know. Maybe they just go for the good old Lycan. How bad is that? They tried to rush Maybe. the game, theoretically. Yeah, they don't have... Maybe they want a rush hero. His like lane would be... Whew. Trolls of this world, like... Mm. Lane. Trolls pretty strong oh. in lane. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like it very much. Against Necro, too. I get the Ursa. Oh, we actually saw the Arc Warden in lane versus the Necrophos. Of course, that would end up being a 1v1. That obviously changes it a lot, but it did go very well for the Arc Warden. The Brood Ban. And they're not banning TA, which might oh. imply that he's going safe with Arc Warden. Yeah. I, I thought about that. Necro. It'd be kind of interesting, right? Because you'd have all the Brulings getting the bonus, and the Silencer and the Arc Warden, and you could like try and rush this game down. And it is kind of an MP hero, but... Roll in on Abed, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's <what you're> doing <laughs> Truly. Already. Give him some Drow Aura. Ten seconds remaining. Go. Drow him around. The... Five seconds remaining. Radiant team pick. Oh, they go with all that reserve yeah. time. They're, they're just hopping into it, yeah. She is the hero of our series. She really is. They lost the previous game, but... I think I just heard Kyle say, I hope they don't TA. <laughs> Which means if they pick TA, they'll win. By, by his logic, oh, yeah. so... The, the, invo <laughs> the Invoker is what you want. I, I really do. I want the Invoker. I've been wanting the Invoker this whole damn series. Ryle, just do it. Could be the last game. Time to show what Grab your worth. coach, grab your captain, shake him and say, listen, give me Invoker. I can do this. Well, the last time mm -hmm. Amid just said what he really wanted to play, it didn't really end well. Was the case of uh, <laughs> the, the Queen, Queen of Pain, of Pain. flame? <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> Jeez, Sheever, you got way more savage ever since the Sheever show. <sighs> I gotta say. Can't shake it off. Oh, it's a clockwork. Oh man, did you see him emphatically March put on that headset? That's a clockwork picking captain headset put her on it right there. That's a brow tiny. It's a Milan clock. Yeah, no reason tiny is a for this nope. game, but um, clockwork. Uh, that's the bigger surprise. Not that Tiny's a core, it's that we get a clockwork. Downside's clockwork. Mm -hmm. Skill shot hero. Skill what has Milan been doing? Both games playing out of his mind. True. I'm totally fine okay. with this. True. Mm. Oh, then you go ahead and say first. <laughs> Let's say them. Well, the downside is that there is a Milan no, who can leap over. But I'm all in on J Storm, Milan, <laughs> the boy, NA, March, top <laughs> tier in my heart. They're going to do it. Yeah. You're welcome. Gods? <laughs> Five games in a row, I'm going to stick Fnatic. Remaining. My heart will die with them. You've got to still believe. Five There's something when right. we can play better, I believe. The tiebreaker bulldog. Yeah, I mean, I'll definitely go for Fnatic. I think Spectre's a little bit too greedy, and clock, it's a clock, it's too, uh, too skill-based. You're going to miss All one right. hook, and then you're going to be, whoops, CD. Can't go anymore. Whoopsie Can't make D. mistakes here. Curious to hear what, uh, what Kyle and, uh, and Toby think about this a draft and also congratulations on getting your first prediction right Kyle. thanks Sheeves. Well appreciate done. it but remember predictions don't mean anything this is at the also end of the true. day right like especially with dota like this it's yes. about the entertainment value we bring to the viewers any schmuck yeah. can talk about who's gonna win but yeah. about being fun see the community feels so much better when you're wrong but this is also true it's true yeah. Gotta give them something to laugh at. But yeah. then Kyle's right about a hell of a lot of other stuff, so it balances, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, I'm going with Trent here, though. J-Storm's got this.
Bad Let's boy. see it then. Enjoy. Good luck, Fnatic. <laughs> now they win, it, right? It's a really good clock pick. I, um, no, we, well, we, we're tossing up at the end, like what, what we thought was going to be there. Like you were, mm. you were flagging Meepo. Like Meepo yeah. was your, your choice for J Storm at the very end. And I it's... thought they might. It looked like a great Meepo game. They banned three counters to it, but they go for the clock instead. Timber also does kind of counter clock in a lot of ways, so mm -hmm. it makes sense. It's just great in this game because you're. You need so many factors for it to be a good clock game. It's why we don't see the hero much anymore. But whenever you can offer solo kill potential on both enemy supports and hard counter two cores, mm -hmm. you get on top of the Arc Warden early game before the four staff, he's dead, and you prevent Brew split. That's something very important. If you get every battery onto a Brew, he cannot split yeah. uh, when he's next to you. Yeah, that was the other thing. Like, uh, like I think I threw a Voker into the pool of, uh, of thought. It's like, well, at least you have like the EMP burn. Like, get some, get some kind of control, get some mm. kind of movement. But it's... Uh, Clock, it, clock long long range engagement should be entertaining. We're now into the game, and uh, we'll see how they roll it out. So it is Malam taking that roll as the clockwork. He has been amazing on Rubik, who was massively overlooked in this game, unfortunately. Uh, but he'll be babysitting the bottom lane for the very, very start. And it is already looking to be a, a three on three contest for the bottom for the bottom rune. Yeah, it, was this? No, it's not a support brew. I thought it was support brew for a second, but... Uh, <laughs> Clock is the hero to play up against Axe. And I think that mm -hmm. with Axe being first picked... Also, Fnatic first picked Axe. Yeah. This game, they'll get Yay! it. J-Storm has not, the Tiny. Not, not Tiny first. Agree. Um, I think that Clock will see more and more prominence in the meta, just because, I mean, how long will the meta really last, right? It's really the end of the yeah. event. But Clock just shuts this Fnatic. hero down. Fnatic are coming to five bottom lane. Uh, they actually got really lucky. I think the ping's only now just coming out. Yeah, the ward, they know exactly where it is. They're going to give it to DJ at the very beginning. Um, but it was because Fnatic moved up, still under the cover of smoke when they planted their ward, to then see March plant his. So if, if, he, uh, if he works it out, maybe. I just drop his sentry ward down as well. But uh, it'll, be a it'll still be a 2-2 two -two rune trade-off. The battle begins. Yep, it's all about Moo's game. You can see they picked the Spectre into the Arc Warden. I was very surprised that Gods was right, and they last picked Marana, because I do not like that hero against Spectre at all. They just wanted this throwaway mid-hero that would have optimal matchups against anything J-Storm would throw at him. Where are you going, man? He walks right underneath the Observer Ward to then come up. Is he looking to block camps? The... He's not dropping the sentry ward, so maybe he's just try, trying to be a bit more of a pain in the butt to MP. So you know, he'll, he'll walk up, just uh, smell the, the fresh air on the hillside, come back from his vacation. How's the laning actually uh, working out? So Jabs will head up towards the top. You've already got the spec TPing out. So uh, she'll move to bottom lane. Necro switches towards the top, and uh, already Milan cocking up Ice Ice Ice. They both get cursed up, so uh, enjoy that top lane. And Silencer is such a pain in the butt for this. They're just going to swap lanes back. It's the downside of TPing first. I think DJ is just trying to get into a position where he knows he won't get uh, Nightmare, even though it's uh, Brain Sap that got leveled up first. And here comes Ice from the backside, but I mean, he is crit level one, so it's not like he can really assist with finding a kill here. He just has no TP for 20 seconds. Was He He must have been zoned out of top yeah, for a little bit. And then TP back out, to, back out to the side. That's pretty grim, to be honest. That means he won't. Uh, DJ is going to be the offlaner for a little bit. Nice is just the support. Yeah, that's actually free for Moon. Mm -hmm. uh, for Moon, like he's just farming up the entire bottom lane. Bane is dealing with DJ, who's uh, who's creep skipping. So yeah. that's a bit of a problem. But he's he's not built for this. He's not the double stout shields that normally give that extra protection. Not just that, but you dodge the brew lane because you don't want your Spectre in an unfavorable matchup. But when you have a full level advantage and that free quelling blade plus a stick, it, it's no longer a really bad lane for you. You should be able to trade at least down here. And oh, nice job by March. Gets the deny along with getting rid of the battle hunger on top of himself. Milan's pulling the creep wave up on the top. So the lane switching is happening. So Axe, DJ, TP's up towards the top. So he stopped doing his thing. So it's just a straight one-on-one. -on -one, but that's why Necro now TP's down the bottom lane. It took so long. But they can just lane switch this once more. moo has got his TP ready. So yeah, he'll head up towards the north. Yep. Ice still level 1, does not have any clap, and 4 have as well with the, with the level advantage, so this Bay Necro lane. Ice is already struggling in this series, and this game is not off to a good start for him. And by the way, check out mid, Bryle putting in work, 13-6, 7-3 on Abed. And so we actually look a little bit close towards the top, Jabs on the run out. The Petrol Dagger slowing him up just a little bit, but Moo, alright, Jabs begins the TP. 
And now it's DJ's turn to take the extra damage. I love that Mu skilled a point into Desolate early as well. I see too many Spectres that brainlessly just go for this 404 style. One point Desolate, 20 bonus pure damage that also reduces enemy vision on hit. I mean, that's Breath. significant. Yeah, shouldn't be the first one. Spark Rate's gonna hit him pretty heavily, and it's just a body block from ISI Sice. They got another Spark Rate over on the side. March will tank that one up. As now, maybe with a Death Pulse, life is created, but for Revy alone, oh, also no. used the Fairy Fire, but he walked back into range of Ice 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 to get clapped up, and March will follow in death. Something we talked about yesterday, Tobes. When you rotate lanes, try to find kills, and that's exactly what they do. Excellent job by Abed. Communicating with Ice, good body blocks as well, and that's huge for both of these cores game. Really is. When they're behind like that, you needed a good advantage. Even the CS was not looking that great, and DJ, Mr. I've got all the CS in the world. Wait, is he even able to stand toe to toe up on the top lane now? Who was mid? Was that was Abed mid or was MP mid? MP it was, was MP, mid, right? It was MP mid. Yeah, because he's level he just hit level four. Bryal a full level up along with the bottle advantage, but He's been uh, denying. MP also was, I think, looking for some rotations mm -hmm. a little earlier on. This Observer and Sentry is just remaining up, so March can't juke it. Uh, he's even lucky enough that that Observer is only barely out of range of the Sentry, but with the curse and the silence, okay. Well, well Nightmare 1, Ice Ice Ice, doesn't have Clap of Vowel. Axe will die in the meantime. Oh yeah, Pitcher and Pitcher, March thinking about the denial, and now not thinking about it again. Brain Snap gives him a little bit of life, but not enough to escape Ice Ice Ice, he'll get the solo kill. Yep. Bright spot though, Mu and Bryle having great games. The two certain standouts from this J Storm lineup. In top lane, DJ, he's playing against the clock, who's now level 3. Two points, Battery Assault, that's 800 magic damage you output if someone were to tank the full duration. So you can't really touch him anymore if you're DJ. All Milan has to do is just isolate him, right? Mm -hmm. Then hit, hit him with the battery assault. Like, you want you want to spin? I'm not going to physically hit you. Ice 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 think they're all waiting for the five minute bounty runes. That's why Bryle's already here and he's the bottle charges. And then they can look towards the top lane. So DJ hasn't revealed himself, but Ice 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 would be very happy just to walk straight up the lane. That's why Milan wraps around the back. Ice 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 wants to keep the pressure on with the battle hunger. At least he can play a little bit more with positioning. I'm surprised Milan didn't go for that. Like, there's no... You do so much more damage than a Brew or an Axe if you get on top of them with battery. Maybe it's uh, the pressure getting on. Like, this is still elimination game, lower bracket mm -hmm. matchup. You've gone through two almost marathons. I think both of our, our games took almost an hour mm -hmm. to get through. That's a good point. Fatigue does definitely start to play a role. Group stage has been going on for a fair few days and they've kind of been run through the ringer for a lot of the matches. Fnatic have not had the greatest performance. Even just that game one for Fnatic is going gonna, is gonna to linger in the back of the mind for confidence level. Six minute rune, Brawl's going to hope it's going to be up on top. He's like, oh, the yeah. best rune and for a tiny. And it's a haste rune. It's the best rune against Marana too. You want to leap away. Can't really do it against a hasted tiny. And he went for that max damage on combo build as well. Toss, of course, amplifying the stun damage. So when you max that out, it means that your combo does pretty much double damage. March TPing bottom, feeling the pressure coming in from Jabs and Arbet. But what they really want to do is go on to mid. So Mirana, they'll nightmare him up, wait for a little bit more. Milana's there also to help out. Jabs does his TP over. They have a large amount of damage, both cursed up, and they just tossed him the clockwork. Let the battery assault damage go, Jabs will die to this, as MP, he still got three leaps available, but that's why Brawl's trying to wait for it. Toss Avalanche combo off cooldown in just a second, doesn't have the mana for the toss, however. Normally wouldn't have been enough damage anyway as they came back underneath the shrine, which will now be popped. Interesting. Game's still relatively even, but Abed is happy, he's having a free game, as is Mu. So once again, it's going to be a duel between these two carries for their respective teams. Bryle on one of his better heroes. I like seeing him play Playmakers and Mu on the hard carry. I think that was a big reason they won that first game and could be part of the reason they lost that second game because when Mu is unable to get a feel for the game, I think their shot calling suffers. Goodbye forever. Bottom lane, all Abed has to do is do a solo. He had no one else there to help him. Jabs is only now just arriving in the lane. So these two great observer wards down by Fnatic, so that, oh, there's one on the bottom lane that's able to watch any kind of movement in through the trees. As uh, 
and then the other one up on top which saw the rotation in from the clockwork so really good information and ice 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 he's not level six yet no brewmaster split to get him out of this one and forever lends the extra damage to find the kill they bring the numbers dj can reveal himself actually behind all of this he's trying to creep skip it he's trying to take the wave with him and he'll do it and really great job by Abed down bottom. He's kept that catapult alive for an extra 30 seconds. Tanked the tower a little bit, pulled creep wave intentionally into the tower, and now offensive lift. And this means you're going to collect a free kill on Bane and that tower. Really well done by Abed. Some advanced game mechanics right there. While they wait up on top lane, the DJ, he'll get the call off. Battery Assault going to do its work. Arrow will fly forward from MP, combining with the Starfall. The damage on the clockwork, it wasn't enough to get the instant kill, but they'll still get the follow through. For Rev, he's got some life thanks to the Ghost Route plus the Death Pulse. Fnatic actually not looking that healthy, and they just toss the spec right on top of DJ. Let that Desolate damage do its work, but he has to get back over to help out. Ryle as well as Forev trying to go up against MP and Jams have already found one onto Ice Ice Ice. Tossing back Jams. Moo once again able to do even more. The curse under Forev. That's not a healthy man, but 7-1 charges will ensure that he won't die. Doesn't want to go back into the spark rate. The range creep will tank that up instead. As the clone goes down, J Storm keep the numbers alive. But they're losing out. They still lost their bottom tower. But man, that one value point in Desolate from Moo has just done so much damage in these early skirmishes. In the meantime, DJ has just been farming jungle, Bryle, really well played there to ensure he comes over to help clean up. I believe if his presence wasn't there, they would have certainly lost the kill on ice and maybe lost a couple extra heroes as well. Well, I'm going to get some XP middle. Ice almost at that split when phase boots first. I like it. Keep that movement up. Increase the damage. At least he's, he's a better harasser when he's got that, right? Yeah, it's also just Brew. I, I hate to see Brew's rush blink. You're not an Earthshaker. You don't have that instant effect in a team fight. And I think a lot of the times, especially in a game like this, yeah, you might buy a blink, but what if you just get hooked? All of a sudden, that item doesn't help you survive whatsoever. It's almost better to buy a force, I feel, in this kind of game. Farm rates really increased for our bed. While up on top, Nightmare Mirana forever's moving over. Like a little bit more damage, Reese's Scythe, the damage with the Spectral Haunt, MP, lead number one, Jabs begins his own TP out, if they got Avalanche, they do to reach him. And Jabs cleave down, but oh, Jabs no, actually creep. knows the creep killed him. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, Bear in mind, Abed. They still got the big one though. Abed's had a Necro Book for a couple of minutes, already used it once. Look at his net worth. Mm -hmm. This is the problem with the Arc Warden. If you don't address the hero, he just starts farming everything. We saw this on his Meepo. We saw this in the previous game. Abed's very efficient with his patterns. You could argue that perhaps he's a little defensive, but at the end of the day, he does deliver in the, those late game situations. The damage he did in game two basically hands down one, one mm. Fnatic the game. And if they can reach that point, like, what's J Storm really got against him? You're gonna run your melee heroes in point blank range against this unless you're just battery assaulting him the entire time so he can't attack. That's the only real way to do it. And that's why ISI size is the filter. TP towards the top, MP, waiting for the arrow. He'll connect over on forever, probably three seconds on this, our bet. Necrobox is still on call down and Brass is just gonna save his core, tossing him away to safety out towards Bane's position. Well, clockwork in the mid, battery assault, ISI size. He just wants to get out of here, but he can't do it. And now the Nightmare, well, I'm still go down to Arbeb, those Spark Rays do a lot of work, and that's why March has to turn around. In trouble though. Oh, no, never mind. This goes between them. Radiant yep. That's the power clock first brew, but as you can see, Arbeb, right place, right time. Curse comes out, over on Necro. Pop the Ghost Shroud, as well as a little bit of regeneration, but it's not stopping MP from chasing Arrow. It's going to miss on Forev. Really want that to oh, hit, and that's going to allow Forev to actually TP away to safety. Bra was already TPing out before that engagement began. Really well played. That was a sure kill, but Forev hit him with the jukes, takes out his old teammate MP. The big survive too. Dyer's Bear in mind, this is a different game. Previously, you had a Medusa. That didn't really apply any offensive threat onto a hero like Art Organ. At a certain point in the game, Mu can just haunt identify Abed and kill him. Yeah. They also have a clock, so you, this is a method of hunting the Arc Warden, whereas the previous game, they were very low on reach. They were just praying for a big call and... What's the build you also go against the Arc Warden to increase the damage? Like, right now it looks like he's just gonna go with uh, Treads and into yeah. Manta. Uh, but what's, what's your later items to get that Arc Warden versus Spec late game matchup? I, I think you probably just go with the Manta Diffusal Heart. 
Um, look in for possibly a Scotty or an Abyssal, depending on how you feel about the game. Maybe even a Butterfly, but I think that's not realistic in this game. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love Manta Diffusal, or you could go Manta Heart. Look towards top lane, TPs are coming in, Milan has hooks ready to go, but Brewmaster into the split, gets the initial stun over on the Necro, makes it difficult for MP to get in really, really close, but when the arrow's already connected for Rev, he actually does get the Ghost Shroud off, Nightmare buys some more time, now Great the Cold War Silence will connect as well, and Clockwork has no way to escape, they just focus down Milan, and while the Storm Brewling just move further down, holding the Bane in the air, Briar wants to fight, but now he's become the next target, the Dunk gives him the movement speed to continue the dive underneath the tier 1 tower, Avalanche is good, and they toss back Ice, 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 to at least get some rebuttals, but it's still a triple kill for the axe yep and that was just perfect play from ice 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 he tps in and you can see we milan has him in his sights top. but hesitates and ice knows what he's doing he's played this hero in these sorts of situations many times before underperformed the last two games but great job there immediate split attack. and all of a sudden j storms on the run the silence was held for so long it's it was, still it was, holding it. was to stop the Spectre, right? Like, yeah. he was going to Spectral Horn in at that right, at almost that exact yeah. time. He just trusted his team. There's the arrow. He knows that the Axe is going to be blinking into top. By the way, DJ has a blink. It was 13 minutes into the game. Um, he hits a double taunt. You silence on top. And at that point, it's over for Jay Storm. They just did a great job ensuring they did not overlap their team fight abilities. Wow. His farm's going to go through the roof even more. Yep. Hand of Midas just got completed on him, uh, and also, if you look towards ISIS, ISIS, he's now gloves away from Hand of Midas. Yep. So, a lot of efficient money coming into Fnatic. Yep, and I like this too. Ice doesn't have a blink, and I agree with this, because a blink doesn't really do anything for you in a game like this. You already have a DJ to rely upon for, uh, for initiation. Mm -hmm. Just chill, go for the late game, get a Midas, get a Force, get a BKB, all the aura items. As long as you get your split off in these fights, you guys are going to be fine. March is in trouble. The rocket actually wakes up Ice 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 and he runs forward. Not exactly what they're hoping for. Meanwhile, Arrow flies and connects. Milan, DJ held him in position with the call, but... That's uh, consecutive kills coming the way for Fnatic. Now they finally hit their rhythm in this entire series. Yeah, I mean, last year, all of last year, it felt like Fnatic was just the DJ and Abed show. And so far this season, I'd say they've surrounded themselves with better teammates. But still, these guys are just on fire. 8k net worth on Abed, 2.5k ahead of the game. Mu has Haunt ready, but he's out of mana. They're smoking, looking to fight in mid. There's a Bruce split active, though. I don't know if you can't engage Bryce here. Blink, goes for the Avalanche, picks up ISI, Science, throws it back down again, but with the Global Silence already back up again, Bruce split will be able to come out. There was no Fiends, but there's no extra control. In fact, Bane just up into the air again once by this by this Brueling, and Briar will go down. March will follow him into the afterlife, yep. and they want to go for more. They won't find it, however, for us pushing top. The Mu is far enough back behind his tier 2 tower that he's in relative safety. You just can't kill a Brew in this game, and goes back to the build in some ways. Phase 1, he's got 1400 HP, yeah, not too much survivability, but as long as he banks on jabs, able to save him with that silence, you're never gonna kill Brew pre-split. And there's just no hope for that fight. Clock isn't initiating, and Mu doesn't even have mana until the wand charges come out from the team fight to haunt in. So where's your damage threat? What's the real plan here? Because bear in mind, Bane Grip isn't a thing when a silencer's in the game. They yeah. smoke up. They're you, coming for a fight instead. You got to. Ultra on cooldown, you got to make a play. You can't allow Fnatic to just farm for the next two minutes until they decide to use their ults to kill you again. Yeah, and the line that's being drawn is to go into the dying jungle. They'll look towards where Silencer is, they'll look towards Ice, Ice 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 is. And they need to make the most of this clockwork hook, anyone you can find. And Necro is going to find him. Silencer get around the trees, and boom! Lock him inside the cogs and the Reaper's side down for 45 seconds. But doesn't this have to be more? This has to be a push into the tier 2 tower, right? Yep, and this is the downside of Spectre lineups. Oh, Where is, is your nice tower push? TP's coming in from the Ark Warden. And uh, he actually just sends his clone instead. Fiends group over on the Brewmaster. Spectral Haunt. They just want this quick end kill, and they've Ooh. got it. No split was available anyway, so even if he did break free, there was no quick jump the out. on DJ, though. Up at the top tower, he's got he got taunted, but he's chasing as much as he can. There's no sight. Yeah, Bane already had to TP out as well, so they don't have the extra control. But DJ, he's actually really burning out. Mu just walks up. Great Isolated job. Isolated hero. Great play from Milan. Found that initial kill on Silencer, had excellent position. He got an earned charge on DJ when DJ was looking to counter-initiate, and that sets up that kill. Because he cuts him off from heading back to base in time for his team to help out. But Brile. tiny mid, Brile. 
Jabs even walks in in time just to get the plus two. Don't worry, he helped out in that fight by being the moral support cheerleader. Abed just on fire. He's so farmed and he's maintained much more presence in this game than he did in either game one or two. He's been active for 12 out of their 16 kills while still accelerating rapidly, almost 4,000 gold ahead of Moose Spectre. But it's still, when you look at the top net worth, out of, out of all of them, like Abed, yeah, okay. He's yeah. going to be number one. There's no surprise about this, but the next three still belong to, to Jay Storm. The sacrifice comes with the supports. Like the fact that the Bane has 1.2k and the clockwork still behind everybody else. Yep. But this will start to change now. Like Tiny's actually just bounced a long way down. I think Fnatic is in a better position just because of how easy it is for them to execute their draft. You're going to have a blink in from Axe coming in. Oh, the Moonlight Shadow, they're going to find Moo. Pick him up. Observer Sentry didn't scan out enough of this. And a five second arrow onto Moo. Support needs to be there. Brother Snap is done. He used it to farm up the mid lane so he couldn't create any level of space for Moo. They're going to chase for more here. Oh, yeah. Bane's nearby. How many times have we seen Fnatic get one kill and then turn them into two? Blink forward and the call. Another they connect arrow. onto March. A perfect arrow. This is the easiest setup combination of their lives. And they find the third, the Spark Wraith. They know for Red to the tree lines. They'll silence him up. And how many times again? Send him up and towards the air. Bring him back down again. And look for more. Jabs, however, he got blocked here by the creeps. Um, he's currently uh, dying to a tier two tower. Um, maybe not exactly what they were looking for. Unfortunate. And you can see, that's what the strength of the Fnatic lineup. They pop Moran and Viz, run forwards. They fear absolutely nothing. They have two free I win buttons in the team fight. The Bruce split and the Silencer alt. And here's Milan. Will he be able to find Icy? Kids the rocket, but the split. Yep. Brewmaster split out. There, There is no catching him out anymore. Earth Brewling goes out to safety. Bear in mind, Fnatic lost that game one, Jaystorm lost that game two, and I felt like both times it was because while they were in a position of power, they played a little too passively. And while Fnatic, you've got double minus. You can yeah. sit on your lead a little bit, but you've got to be wary, because at a certain point, this is a Spectre game. You remember TI? He's been nerfed a bit, but at a point... I, I still wonder, though, like, uh, like, with this level of pressure, the difference in net worth, like, how is how is he meant to find space on the map? Like, yeah, mm. Spectre's really great because you can sit in the lane, you special point, and you get into the fight straight away. So, that's a nice side, but it still leaves you so vulnerable to this Axe call into Murano. They only yeah. the two to kill him off almost every single time, unless he's got a counter ability to that, which, once calls out, you don't. Yeah, it, it activates your brew, in a sense, because you don't have to be relied upon to initiate. It's an easy... Oh, dead. Spark Rate's gonna actually aggro on him. Sleep. Oh, no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Anymore. He's, he's, uh, he's cursed. Let's get out run it. Death Pulse for have tried. Clockwork. Oh, shots Milan. Goes in towards the mid. They're going to use oh, Spectral Horn to get right and forward. Onto Abed with the dust. They have the reveal. The and with the Spectral Dagger, he goes over the top. But they need to finally get the hit. And they will finally get it. But it came through the urn charge. Meanwhile, Reaper signs in the back lines. Finds his own kill. Milan needs to get out of here. And that won't happen. MP leaps forward with the Starfall. Drops the secondary one. And connects it to Milan's head. But Rev, now he's the man on the run. DJ will call him back. And the arrow will hit. And that's four heroes down, J Storm. Once yep. again, Brile. DJ is such a great controller. Not just that, Brile's not there. Brile was pushing top. He didn't, like, the tower up there is already dead. Once you get the wave going, Brile, you gotta get back and look to cover your team. It was a great initiation from J Storm. I like that play. When you identify you can kill Abed, you've gotta make that move, but mm -hmm. they just aren't five. Well, Ice 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 isn't done yet. Blink, call, arrow. How many times must we see it? This is almost like the old Bane Marana combination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's so nice to play with these little cheap combos without getting rid of your whole combo. Oh, Avalanche toss. Trying to find that counter. Moo's already moved in. DJ begins his TP away to safety. MP will only be so lucky. The clone. Um, our bad clone is there to try and slow him down. Marana can leap once. Doesn't have a secondary one, but the Brewmaster's in here too. Creating just that interference level. Right against the tower. What a great play by Abed. Saving his teammate and ensuring they get the tier 2 bottom. It's just so easy. As you can see, like Axe, Marana. They handle the initial kill setup. Brew, Silencer, Abed. You play around this. It's so easy to ensure you use your spells properly because mm -hmm. DJ is always initiating fights for you. And if you're Jaystrom, you can't commit too hard because you know that those I win buttons are just waiting in the wings. Yep. Just to split. Even if you don't bring detection, then Moonlight Shadow away and well everything else that up it's gonna pop at them. He's uh, gonna finish up his Mjolnir as the, as the next primary item. 
just bear in mind, Fnatic, they're not looking to close the game out just yet. They're going to need an Aegis. Probably another couple items on Abed. <laughs> Don't say the word, eh? Because if, yeah, if, if we go back towards Roshan, how many times has this been Fnatic's downfall? That's true. They're gonna they're gonna smoke up. The lines are drawn to try and move aggressively over to where Moo's currently farming. He may not hang around, however, because both these camps have already been farmed, and he's near his own Observer Ward. But his presence there pops the scan. And it makes Fnatic very afraid. You don't want to go up a high ground at the moment because you're against a clock. So, sure, you have silence, but if he's able to cogs you out of a choke point, that could just end the fight right there. They're going to see him with a dire observer ward. The one that's back behind the tower. Again, the combination, even a global silence. No spectral haunting away from this. No nothing. It's just a quick dunk. And we have assassination Fnatic. Uh, you've got to take a wider angle there if you're moved. He went through in such a way that they're going to have vision. Obviously, that ward would have probably spotted him out anyway, but you have no time to react if you don't play that far left side of the tower. They put down two wards there too, so mm. like, even if one of these wards gets dewarded, Fnatic still maintain their vision. And they're doing a great job. And this is, we talked about this how many times if you're dire? This is where you want to be playing, that top Radiant Shrine area, because yep. inevitably they've got to stop oh. you, or you get Roche for free. The time, the time to TP! DJ, he needed a fraction of a second. Yeah. And I love this from Ice. He's not going for the blink. You have initiation, that's not a problem. Whew. He went for pipe, he's going full team fight items, Our Lads up next. They put the Nightmare down onto the Silencer. Is there a follow-up? Brawl's coming in. They've already lost their Sentry Wars. They don't have any kind of detection, so Brewmaster just goes instantly into the split. Avalanche will create a little bit more space. He needs to actually hit the cleave damage, but Brawl sets up. They'll get the kill over on the Silencer. Milan, he gets into the back lines, forcing MP to jump away as Moo keeps Arbed under control in the mid lane. But they want to go for more. MP will find a DD rune, but the bigger jump is up on top. They threw him forward. They want DJ's kill. He's 11-3, and they're going to put him down with a Reaper side. A huge kill to get. MP, so low on life, one more rocket was an urn. Yeah, he got the urn charge off on him. There's a spark rate to help. Clockwork stunned up for half a second, and there's the rocket to finish the job. Great Meanwhile, shot. up on the top lane, that's the run over on Ice Ice Ice. Avalanche to connect, and now it's Fnatic's turn to give a bunch of kills to J Storm. It's almost like this game is scripted. When Fnatic has their ults up, when they have that silencer ult, they're going to be able to play aggressive and find kills. But when it's down, J Storm looks to get aggressive. Milan missed his hook narrowly on Abed, or he may have been able to take him out. Mu actually haunted in on top of Abed, expecting it to land, but unfortunately just off to the left. But they clean up four. You're fine with that. March, doing March things, just dying for the cause. Ten times already. Such a team player. Hey, maybe we have a we actually have a potential Melk award then, but we watch the fight once more. So there's at least your jump into the back. And you can see, it, this is a good job by Abed. He TPs out right next to a creep, so there's no chance the desolate damage would be able to take him out. And Milan pursues Marana all the way up to the top right. They save the scythe kill onto DJ, tons of gold in the pocket of the Necrophos. And then 4F TPs back to ensure he's there to interrupt Ice Ice Ice's TP mm -hmm. after he finished off the Bane. And I do still stand by. I love what Ice has done. He's going to be going full team fight. Probably look for an AC after the Vlads, maybe a BKB. And that's how you beat a Spectre. You ensure that his AoE damage doesn't threaten your teammates. Because it's not him killing Abed that's going to be a big issue initially. It's going to be when he can just haunt and immediately kill your Silencer. Maybe your Marana as well. Who MP, by the way. Eighth in net worth. Not a game for your last pick Marana to really thrive in at the moment. Yeah, he won't be uh, too happy about that, but it's it's the job that he has to do, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's as long as he combos with the axe, you've done your job. Yep. Arrow flies forward, they're looking in towards Roshan. We were mentioning before that this is going to be a point of content contention. Oh, the hawk! Oh, Jabs just backed off a little bit. Sentry and Sentry on either side. Interesting Tinker Ward that they left up on top. Does provide a little bit more safety for whoever's trying to pressure that top lane. But Arbed's clone continuously pressuring the bottom lane. But J Storm, even if they do want to sit up on the northern side, like they always have to look to the south. Mm -hmm. You just you gotta look to keep finding skirmishes with alts down. Bear in mind, Abed is 8k ahead of the game, but his team is only 6,000 ahead, so he controls the entire advantage of Fnatic in this game. Your J Storm play away from him, find skirmishes, pick offs, try and bait out some ultimates. Yep. Have him isolated just like mm -hmm. he was in the last engagement. Like he couldn't yep. get through. Like you'd, you'd have to walk through. Yeah. And it's because of the choke point. We saw Clock initiate and his cogs just deny that uphill from Abed, who's then chased away from the 
with the Moose Spectre. You want those split up engagements. You don't want Fnatic doing what they've got a couple times, with like three-man brew split into someone tossed up, and they find one kill easily into two, into three. They will have a repositioner now. He's got the Hurricane Pike, not to mention that nice range advantage, top lane. There you go, in for the hook shot. Global Silence, silence is out, and, well, Dust will be burnt. Ice, Ice, Ice says, okay, well, I'll just burn my Bruce split while over on the top of the Bounty Rune, right. that's where the kill's going on. Brile, he tried to move up, but then ran to the entire Fnatic lineup. Barev will begin his own TP out to safety. He's able to do it just in time. We'll see if Milan's going to be so lucky. His TP is off cooldown, and will they see him? They will see him, and the call. MP actually didn't have the mana at the time for an hour, so the call was the only thing in range to cancel that TP. Yeah, Mu desperately trying to farm. He's going to have that Relic soon to finish a Radiance. A greedier style of play. I expected maybe He's a defusal, defusal, but no. He uh, Radiance, in a sense, is the better item because it'll allow him to continue scaling and almost guarantee that DPS advantage in the ultra late game. Well, it's the best with our bet too, right? Yeah, and, but there's a pipe on the brew. I really like Ice's itemization for this reason. You're throwing, you're getting rid of J-Storm's real timing window. The, the Radiance won't matter too much when you consider the massive DPS output of Abed and the fact that the pipe will negate the entire heart damage. Aegis the Immortal. It is now up. They actually put it into the hands of Marana of, uh, of all the players. Trying to keep her alive a little bit longer in the fights. Maybe this is because Abed just feels so confident anyway. He is 20k in the net worth. Looking towards the Scythe device is the next thing. Dabs on the run. March. Well, I know you like running in and being aggressive, but... There has to be a limit to it at some point. That's why Bra goes instead. Reef the side comes down. They found the kill. Well. Jabs instantly deleted. He'll buy back. That's going to be a long death timer. But does J-Storm still want to keep going on this? DP from the silencer has already brought him back to the front lines. They've already popped the Crimson Guard as whoa, well as what? the Piper. Whoa! March! In he goes so deep! Was that where you really wanted to throw your man? Necro's in the middle of this fight as well. They may have some to save, but then no. The call from DJ. Bra with the right. Cleave him up. The lava will jump two. Up until it's time to bubble. Bra can't do enough damage for him. DJ's got himself the double kill. And you've got the respawning Marana. Thanks to the Aegis Immortal. Chase Storm. So deep. Too deep. Brya literally throwing the game there by tossing his Captain March straight into certain destruction. That, by the way, is why you always have to be very, very cautious about chucking teammates in, because you can't throw them out of there. Um, oh, boy. That was before the Radiance timing as well. And you can see Mu actually switched up his item choice to Defusal because he realizes, wait, there's a pipe on the enemy side. We're already so far behind, and we just lost five for none. You just lost Midrax. Very, very simply. Without Brile, they don't have that jump initiation. No buyback available for three of them, and there's no way. There is no way the Spectre wants to spend it, and she's already switched over to, over to Fusal. It's like, it's like, this is what you need. You need to be able to fight right here, right now. See the pipe, see the Crimson, and they still willingly fought into it. You get your initial pickoff over on, over on the Silencer, but that doesn't even matter. Even if it's a dieback, we'll watch this once again, and... Uh, well, what? like, there is no hope for that maneuver. Like, there's a pack of hungry lions over there. This reminds me of that news story about the guy that jumped into the exhibit with all the lions. It didn't end up, it didn't end very well for him either. I figured maybe Bryle had seen that article. It was on Facebook, but anyway. I'm sorry, Wards placed all over the place. Did, did we use that site? Um. Yeah, so that's a Rax, that's a Roche. And, you know, props to Abed and Fnatic. They were prepared. They kited excellently. They lost the silencer, sure, but they retreated and he bought back. They welcomed that engagement and they turned it around very effectively. Good job, Abed, right on the money, just immediately looking to shove lanes, ensuring that they get the optimum amount of objectives cleared and now right after that fight. fight. You've yep. got, uh, you'll have the double scythe. Uh, it just appeared over on Arc Warden because you'll have the clone where the secondary one comes from, and they just want to kill. And they're pinging. They want to go in through the yep. mid. Oh, no, 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 You don't want to go anywhere near that Dyer is scanning. It pinged for half a second. So now they look. They'll see him. They'll see Moo. Sentry Ward's place. They see nothing else. Observer down as well. And there it is. They forced off DJ into the call with the global silence. Moo cannot afford to die now. He is still so low, but alive. Now gone. 70 seconds on the sideline. Necro up. Dropping back down again. It's a hard reality at a hard ground. DJ with the double kill. Milan is trapped. to be pushed back out of his own cogs while bang next to tier 2 tower isolated one after the other they fall like dominoes j storm 
in more than a world of hurt. Abed goes bottom lane to push in the south. They can go through the north. Mid's already coming in. Whatever lane they want, Fnatic can have. Just perfect play. I love that move. It's one of my favorite calls to make when you have one racks and a distinct advantage. Going through the base. Find somebody asleep inside next to their tier fours. They get the best kill possible move just after finishing defusal. He'll have no buyback. That's two racks for certain. And Jay Storm. They may even have a kill. Milan. No, no, the hour didn't come in time. Still five seconds stun over on Brial. I again point to the play of Fnatic, the itemization just much crisper this game. They made it easier on themselves. They have a pipe, they have a crimson, the four staffs. It's just so much easier to execute when you're not relying on everyone hitting this ma these magical ability. Hawk, they fly forward over towards Axis. Fnatic want to try and turn around and save him. Quick four staff, DJ low on mana. Jab's already beginning his TP out. They go for the Spectral Haunt. Just how deep do they really want to go? DJ is copying the, the, uh, the hits right now. But we're split up towards the mid, they jump in, but the leap away from MP creates in space, and Moo can't find the kill that slept up the Arc Warden, but it ain't the real one. It's only the clone, and the Arc Warden can still do some significant damage. He'll now time out, and really, does J Storm get nothing? They actually have nothing. Yep. Uh, and soon you're gonna have a Silver Edge up on Arc Warden. He'll be able to just <laughs> immediately kill Spectre. Oh, I bet just got a DD rune combining on his Shadow Blade. He's gonna hunt for a kill. Don't he doesn't even need any, any extra help at all. Okay, oh, he just stopped the farm. <laughs> Thanks, Arped. It's not like any of my predictions have been right, so... You can't expect yours to do any better, Tobes. <laughs> That's why I don't predict. Arped heading into the base just for the clone, though. Oh. Just with the clone? Just? Get a timeout. Milan, licking his wounds for this. And I'll get rid of the Observer and Sentry that was planted previously. Yep. And even more runes, even a haste rune up on top. Roche uh, spawns in two to five minutes, but I think if you're a fanatic, you can look to close out this game beforehand. Could just play it safe. No real reason to rush. You have two racks already, but their land, their lead is just so commanding. Mm -hmm. They can probably finish up a bigger item before this. Uh, the Silver Edge is what they want to buy on the Arc Warden. Going to make it so really Moo is a complete non-factor if he gets hit by that. They have no vision. These supports of Fnatic have all the money in the world to buy every century they want. But seriously, what a game by DJ, man. 17, 4, and 8. Mm -hmm. Abed 8, 1, 18. That one death. Because DJ with back-to-back -back performances as well. Yeah. Like, his ES in game 2. Like you would think that a core player would have been the most highly recruited player post-TI, but it was a 100% DJ. I think he could have probably joined any team he wanted, because he's just that good and easily one of the standout players of last season, demonstrating his value. Him and Abed, man, they're just so good. Fnatic are going to prove that value once more. They're coming in through top. The clones pushed in the bottom hard enough that Fnatic will have the momentum once more. Of course, they already did because they took out the bottom lane of Rax. And J Storm will be on pressured on all sides. Mid and bottom will be creep wave and top will be five heroes at Fnatic. Here they come. Almost inevitable, it feels. This time, Jay Storm at least have Observer and Sentry down so they can see any kind of Invis shenanigans forward. And again, Bryle in through the back as the Avalanche starts to kill off the Sansa so quickly and maybe even more with the Reaper's oh, fight. Go. He's actually down! How has Jay Storm done this? They're gonna go for more! Mirana, send him up towards the air. DJ, he'll hit the ground again. Moo, do they have any kind of retreat? Yeah, they do. March is stuck in the tree lines and that's why DJ jumps over. Culling Blade executes him. The Storm ruling. They're gonna time out right now. They've Got the sustain, DJ holding him in position. The Cogs hold the high ground, MP, but here comes Ryle! Once again, pushing around DJ. Moonlight Shadow, some kind of defense. DJ solo, MP on 27 HP, but the they can't stopper. kill what they can't see. He's running away. Hasabor is too far away. Do they blink the right way? <laughs> DJ's now gonna TP up. Battery Assault will cancel that TP, so at least they'll be able to kill off the axe. Brio comes in, man. He tossed in Jay Storm before into an environment they did not want to be in, but that time around, he hit the sweet spot, the plum middle of the bat. Give that man a cherry. He's... Oh, wait, what? He got him with the rocket. No, no, wait, what? What? Oh, did the heart... Can we see again? It's a death oh, pulse? Oh, the death the pulse death chased pulse? him. I thought it disjointed. Bullshit. Did that actually chase him the whole way? <laughs> um... It must I... have been. Did he not see it? 
I, I saw it hit him when he was invisible. I thought it was destroying it. I, I don't know if uh, PGL production value can go back in through the replay in real time and find this and just I mean, see you, the dead pulse kill. You said it best. That was. A, you needed some miracle. And Bryle gave it to a three man stun toss combo. They get the scythe onto Abed. And How not only that, they're going to get ages. How did he not regenerate enough to actually survive one death pulse? Like it was one death pulse. That? It's, it's 220 damage, and he couldn't live through that. Tier 4 towers are going to go down, but J-Storm got the Aegis Immortal and the Cheese. They put both into move and keep him alive, so they lose a Tier 4 for that. And if you wonder why sometimes teams look to be in complete control of a game, and you're just thinking, oh, can't you just end? Why do you have to wait for Roche? It's because scenarios like that. And yeah, sure, maybe J-Storm went from a 2% chance to win to not quite whole milk, but maybe 10%. We have we have the replay, so this is this is that top lane fight. Yeah, so it's the perfect initiation into the site. Like all the damage onto the um, the Abed Arc Warden. DJ can't blink in because of the haunt. Well timed, mm -hmm. has to walk over, and it's just too late. The site goes down. There's your kill. But MP, he's somewhat isolated. You see, Mu barely survives on like 200 HP, so he's able to help finish Roche and ensure that he's the one who picks up the Aegis, which is critical. But right here. The hand toss combo, it's, tree throw. It's you, like the three stuns each time with each look, avalanche. Look, the death pulse hits him. It hits him right there. So how the hell did he die? I, he's I too no far idea. away for a secondary death pulse. Did he, did he like walk into him and we didn't see or something? That's possible. Maybe the death pulse also went like uh, invis when they went invis. Uh, goodbye, Radiant Courier. That did have the Reaver on it. Ooh, that's that's uh, painful. That's uh, not what they want to have because Fnatic are lining up to come back in again. Like, they're, they're queuing up for the top lane. Yeah, you ganked us once, good for you. Can you do it twice? And maybe that's why you see Bryle already moving out. They're feeling it. The arrow flies forward. They pinged it. Yeah. They know. They know he's there. There was a sentry ward down. They know that <laughs> Bryle is there in this. Just like blinking. Blinking. I can hear that coming from a mile away. Just back off. Put down the spark rates. Create a wall. Spectral Haunt is off cooldown. Remember, they have the Aegis Immortal on Mu. Mm. But the issue is going to be that global silence. The fact that Jabs died so early, it's still up and running for this fight. It's not just so that. It's, it's hard to bring him instantly into the engagement. Lou also just doesn't have farm. His Reaver's down. He's got mana defusal. That's all his damage. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind, Fnatic, they've itemized for a hell of a lot of teamfight items. Vlad's, Crimson, and Pipe. They just don't take much damage right now, and you need another miracle. Bryle did it once. He's got to do it again. Uh -huh. Teenage Phenom. Man, at least Millen's able to pick up the 240 minute bounty runes. Okay, so is this the, this is the moment. We've managed to recreate it. He finds the bounty rune, and then all of a sudden, uh, noob team. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. It's, all right, we're, I'm sure that one's going to come up a little bit later. We can come back into real time right now. If the clone moves forward, Forev cops a little bit of damage, but it's over on the side. Millen, four staff down. Gets far enough away from Ice 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 as he rocket gives a little bit more information. He's looking for the good hook shot in from the side. Just like before, they're looking for a rinse and repeat. But uh, Fnatic won't want to get the hair wet. And Mu doing a good job just shoving out bottom. He'll have his heart up in a minute if he can get that courier respawn. His damage does, output will be low, but he has he to make some targets. He kind of needs to have a buyback if got as well, right? No, you need that. No, you got the Aegis March. Has to nightmare this Arbed clone being such a pain in the butt. Oh, bottom. Yeah, DJ. They're setting up. They're going to find him. They break him. Manta. He jumped in. He actually jumped down. He spectral haunted up towards the top. Ice 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 was still up there. And he jumped on the back of him. The moonlight shattered, so there was no easy way for Moon to get out. But thanks to the Manta style, yep. he jukes so quickly away. And that's the benefit of Marana as well against Spectre. I questioned it as a last pick, but it is quite nice. You have that Marana invis to cancel the haunt, and unless Spectre has dust, he's unable to find you and get on top of you to lock you down, because just he's get still, away. He still used him for an Uber ride. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Real still close, too. I still can't believe the Death Pulse got the kill then. Like, what the hell? I, mm. I, I, am, I am reeling from it. And you can see, once again, who was there to try and find Mu? Abed and DJ. Uh -huh. Would have almost certainly been two kills on Mu and possibly the GG. He will have the heart coming up right now, and he did buy a dust, as expected. Mm -hmm. Just a question of, will he really do enough damage? That Aegis is going to get reclaimed in 45 seconds, and they yep. lost a Tier 3 in that time. They didn't acquire any map control. Yep. But they did stop Fnatic from pushing in once again. Stopped yeah. them from getting Megas. Like, this is this is the Ooh. hold on for J-Storm. They were still 
so far behind in net worth. Yes, it's still going more of the way of Fnatic, but the only real swing back up again was was coming in through through experience. This is they're, they're getting slowly into the game. Such big plays by both four positions, though. Milan scouted out that DD, which is why they're making the smoke move because that would possibly give Spectre enough damage to turn the tide. But DJ, he's got an illusion rune that spawned top. Thanks to the Spark Wraith from the Abed clone, he knows there's a DD there. He actually kills it and equalizes that information advantage. Really well done by both players. But, you know, when you're 25k ahead and two racks up, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to play Dota. Yep, they're coming in. Abed creates the clone, looking for the racks. He'll double Hurricane Pike it forward, finding the target. Mart! Mart! Oh! I feel so sorry for him. Brewmaster split thanks to the cover of the BKB, but there's that jump in. It's the back lines again. They are hunting that silencer. And they don't just hunt him, they kill him. Five back to bubble. So then the silence can already be kicked in. But the BKB from Bryle, he knows he's in trouble. Spectral Horn, they jump forward. Bryle is still on the run. And maybe now Mooka start doing some damage with the toss back. They're still looking for the target for Red Sticks with them to get as much DPS out as possible. Now the silence is in from Chad. Finding the damage. Necro is gonna go down. Don't so go down. Too many dead for VJ. Storm. They do not have buybacks, and that should be the game. No way to defend that top rack. GG is called. Fnatic, it looks hard to win this series, and it really was, but they take it two to one at the end of the day and keep their hopes alive to play up against the winner of EG versus Forward tomorrow. Yeah, and that is going to be one hell of a series coming oh, up. Oh, yeah. Fnatic, they, they look better on a game to game basis, all right? It couldn't get much worse than game one, but an incredibly hard-fought series victory. There were some bright spots. DJ played out of his mind. Yep. Abed as well. Ice was really the big difference maker <laughs> in going from a liability to more of the superstar so, we know him to be. Yep. That fight around Roshan wouldn't have been won without Ice. Like, the fact they had both Crimson and Pipe up at the same time. Itemization looks better. Mm. Fnatic, like... So many were looking for Fnatic to just be that huge team of SCA. Look fantastic on paper. They've got so much skill. They just had to harness it. Yep. They at least have another chance to show even more now as they go through to the next round.